ominous, macabre objects. They're waiting until humanity is ready to create world peace. Gifts to save humanity, occult objects, or something else. He said that if you looked into its eye sockets, you would die. As legends that surround them grow, so has the quest to understand what they are. Discovering the truth behind the Crystal Skies. The human skull fascinates us. Instantly recognizable, it's a universal emblem of death. To all ages, in all cultures, it's a potent reminder of man's mortality. But none have excited popular imagination as much as these skulls, carved from solid pieces of rock crystal. They first appeared in the 19th century, then the most famous crystal skull of them all. The crystal skull, known as the skull of doom, is said to be the weirdest gem in the world, the granddaddy of all crystal balls. It is the one of many and has the greatest legend. Measuring some 13 centimeters high, 18 centimeters long, and 13 centimeters wide, the solid crystal skull, known as the skull of doom, weighs a hefty five kilograms. It was reportedly discovered at Luban tomb, which means the place of fallen stones. It's an ancient Maya city in the tiny Central American country of Belize. The city flourished around 1100 years ago until it was mysteriously abandoned. At the start of the 20th century, British adventurer F.A. Mitchell Hedges, one of the inspirations for Indiana Jones, began crude excavations. It was the year 1926. Twice we had returned to Lubantun after the first burning, and slowly we had torn the city from the arms of the jungle. During our excavations, we unearthed thousands of specimens of Maya culture. Well, Frederick Mitchell Hedges was a uh, professional um, adventurer. He would like to have called himself an explorer. What he did do was a great deal of fairly adventurous traveling. In his 1954 autobiography, Danger My Ally, Mitchell Hedges mentions the object he ominously calls the Skull of Doom. The Skull of Doom is made of pure rock crystal. It is at least 3,600 years old. Used by the high priests of the Maya, it is said that when he willed death with the help of the skull, death invariably followed. From the beginning, the crystal skull is reported to have paranormal powers. Mitchell Hedges himself calls it the embodiment of all evil. His book is short on details, but it does offer an idea of how the skull was made. According to scientists, it must have taken over 150 years, working all the days of their lives, patiently rubbing down with sand, an immense block of rock crystal. The skull's existence captured the imagination, but its mystery was added to by what the adventurer refused to reveal. 
Mitchell Hedges acquired it, but said tantalizingly, how I acquired the skull of death, I have reasons for not revealing, or words to that effect. And there started the speculation about this curious object. Throughout the 1950s and 60s, the claims made by Mitchell Hedges about the skull were debated. And in the 1970s, speculation led to investigation. They couldn't determine the age of the skull, but experts agreed that it was so skillfully made, it would be almost impossible to replicate. Now, 40 years on, that verdict is about to be challenged. A unique investigation into crystal skulls is to attempt the incredible. If the skull can be reproduced, it'll be the first time it's been done on camera. Today, one of the best places to go for a crystal skull is halfway around the world, in Beijing, China. China's capital city is the base of operations for one of the most prolific manufacturers in the world. They make modern crystal skulls. It's big business. The legends that surround these objects have made sure that hippies, crystal healers and fans of the occult all want them. We sell more than 7,000 skulls a year, 20 to 30 skulls per day. We had a customer in Illinois, US. He bought 365 skulls in 2010. That's one skull a day. A suburban workshop is the base of operations. But making a replica of the most famous crystal skull of them all is a big challenge. No one knows how it was originally done. And according to expert analysis in the 1970s, it's almost impossible. The man taking up the challenge is Mr. Zhu. This sculpture dates back a really long time. It's hard to identify exactly how they did it. I'm amazed that they could make it. It's a lot of hard work. From the off, it's a big ask. Producing the replica means getting every detail exactly right. Even cutting the block of solid quartz crystal that the skull will be made from is a tricky moment. A wrong move now could end the experiment before it's even begun. An experiment to reproduce what experts say is impossible is underway. A replica of the Skull of Doom is to be cut from a single piece of solid quartz crystal. And the first cut is just millimeters away. The raw material is worth thousands of dollars. So if anything goes wrong, it's money down the drain. The only way Mr. Zhu can make his replica Skull of Doom is by using high-speed cutting tools. A hasty cut will shatter the delicate quartz. The two-piece skull is taking shape, but it needs polishing. The Skull of Doom has a mirror-like polish, and replicating it, even with motorized equipment, is a laborious task. It's taken eight days of careful cutting. Another three to polish. 
But now Mr. Zhu has achieved what some thought was impossible. He's created an exact replica of the Skull of Doom. This crystal skull, many people said it was impossible to copy. But we did it. This is the biggest achievement a sculptor can have. It's a major step in the investigation. First, this replica proves that the Skull of Doom can be copied. It shows that even using modern equipment, it's a difficult and time-consuming job, even for an expert. But the replica's job has only just begun. Next, it's going to the ruins of Luban Tomb, where the real Skull of Doom was reported to have been discovered. It'll be checked out by Dr. John Morris, Associate Director of Research at the Institute of Archaeology in Belmapan, Belize. He's not convinced that the magical skull was made by the ancient Maya. In all my studies of pre-Columbian societies, we have not seen a crystal skull. There might be a few artifacts that might be made of crystal, but nothing as elaborate as this crystal skull. By comparing it to known Maya artifacts, he's hoping the replica will show that it couldn't have come from the ancient civilization. What we're looking at here are faces and images that the Maya carved they use stone, shell, limestone, even on the images on the pottery, you could sense that uh, these represent images of what the ancient Maya might have looked like. It would be great to see the crystal skull. The skull shares no similarities with Maya art. But how about a real Maya skull? It is remarkable. Generally speaking, all the skulls we find are sort of like this one here, especially when we find them in elite context, uh, you find them with a flattened forehead um, because that was a mark of royalty. It's a sign of beauty amongst the ancient Maya. Whereas this here is sort of rounded, flat, and elongated in the back. We don't see anything like this, any shape like this in ancient Maya. The evidence suggests the crystal skull isn't a mystical Maya artifact, as claimed by Mitchell Hedges. If it were, surely it would resemble their art and culture more closely. It's an inconsistency that doesn't add up. But there's more. In San Francisco, 4,000 kilometers from Lubantun, experts are going to attempt a world first. They're going to add flesh to the skull of Doom and rebuild its face. If the mysterious object was created by an ancient American civilization, its face should have Central American features. Gloria Nusi rebuilds the faces of human remains for the San Francisco Sheriff's Department. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Even the zygomatic arches are open. This is a very intricately made skull. He or she, whoever carved this, would have to have studied skulls quite a bit. Using the replica skull, she's going to discover the face that belongs to the Skull of Doom. So this is kind of what I do. Clay and silicon are the tools of her trade. Oh, it's always scary, this part. I have to say, I'm always a little... Ah. 
Once complete, she'll have a cast of the skull on which she'll start to rebuild the face that, according to legend, is 3,600 years old. Identifying the features of the Skull of Doom will be a major step towards proving whether or not it was crafted in Central America. If it is confirmed, then the legend that says it was a tool used by Maya priests to will death could also be true. It's a claim that this woman spent decades promoting. After her father's death, Anna Mitchell Hedges inherited the Skull of Doom. She, more than most, publicized its incredible story and added to its legend. Uh, my father was uh, excavating in Central America and we uh, excavated for about seven years clearing the ground and then one day we spotted something shining through the stones. Right up to her death in 2007, she told the story of how she, not her father, discovered the Skull of Doom. I went to pick it up because I had smaller hands than the other people did. And I picked it up and showed it to my father. And he just couldn't believe that we found this beautiful crystal skull. Anna Mitchell Hedges also confirmed the rumors that it had terrible power. Let's look at the Skull of Doom. If you laugh at it, you die. That's the legend, isn't it? Yes. Well, do you believe that one? Yes, I do believe that very much so. Uh, Anna Mitchell because Hedges claimed... A belief shared by those who claim to have been able to communicate with crystal skulls. Joshua Shapiro is one of them. The voice said, the information that I'm sharing with you now comes from the minds who have placed their knowledge and information inside of the crystal skull. And this is the source of where this information is coming from. This ability to communicate is one of the most extraordinary claims made about crystal skulls. How is it possible for an inanimate object that's made out of quartz crystal which is the same material that all of our modern electronics is using right now, how can it come to life? A scientist would say, Joshua, you're insane, that's impossible, there's no way. Well, here's what it is about quartz crystal. They are acting as dimensional doors. When the crystal is activated in the right way, those spirits start coming through. At the De Montfort University in England, Dr. Eric Goodyear, an expert in computer science, is going to use the replica Skull of Doom to test Joshua Shapiro's theory. One of the commonest stories about the crystal skulls is that they are the repository of ancient knowledge coming from the stars or the spirits or, oh, who knows where, I have no idea. But let's think about how does a brain work? If this was a real brain that was a real repository, there would be lots of things happening within the cell structure. There would be electrical activity. He's hooked up a living subject to a machine that monitors this activity. Chris, could you just blink your eyelids a few times and let's actually see around. There you can see the muscle activity is coming straight through into the signals and we're picking up life and activity. Now, what happens when the crystal skull is connected to the EEG? Well, as we can see, there's nothing, absolutely nothing. There's no activity whatsoever. No brain activity, no electrical activity, absolutely nothing. And let's remember, this is a very sensitive piece of apparatus. Even if there were signals outside normal human responses, we would pick it up. The crystal skull is an inanimate object. It contains no electrical pulses, so it's not acting as a transmitter. Next, it's going to be tested to see if it contains any of the holographic images that believers say they've seen inside of crystal skulls.
Legend says that crystal skulls contain 3D images of the past, present and the future, and believers claim to have been able to see them. We start to see kind of holographic images. It shows extraterrestrials, different scenery, different places. Um, Mayans are shown in there, other crystal skulls are shown in there, um, dolphins. All kinds of images are shown in there. But surprisingly, one crystal skull, once purported to be an Aztec skull, does have a connection with holograms. One of the first holograms to be put on public display in London was a hologram of the uh, Aztec crystal skull from the British Museum. Martin Richardson, a professor of holography, says any 3D images contained in a crystal skull would show up in a relatively simple test. Laser on. If the crystal skull was capable of containing a holographic image, then we should certainly be able to replay that holographic image today. He's going to examine the skull under a high-powered laser. What I'm holding at the moment is a genuine hologram. You can see on the wall behind me an image of a, a young lady in this case being projected from the hologram. Now, if the crystal skull contains a holographic image, it's not unreasonable to imagine the same sort of projection occurring. And if there were holographic information stored inside the crystal skull, we would in fact be able to see it now. And what I can see is the most beautiful patterns occurring inside the quartz crystal, but no phantoms, no ghosts, no visions of the future, simply diffracted laser light and certainly no hologram. The investigation into crystal skulls has found no evidence to support the claims that these objects have any unusual properties. Shining lasers at the replica hasn't produced any fantastic images. It's just a lump of intricately carved quartz. In San Francisco, a unique experiment to determine if the skull of doom was made in Central America is underway. It's being examined to see what racial characteristics it has. Legend says they must be Maya. Here we go. Let me see, it's kind of hard to get it out of the orb. It's a lot more detailed than I thought it would be. The um, shape of the eye orbits, mm -hmm. that's pretty realistic. Professor Cynthia Wiltzak examines skeletal remains to determine age, sex, and country of origin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you can feel the ridge right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Details in the carving suggest that the skull's maker must have used a real one for reference. So in theory, it should be possible to ID the racial origin of that skull. Well, there. is there one on the other side? No. There are a few features um, in the skull that we sometimes associate with biological ancestry. Um, the way that it's peaked right here where the nasal bones are. Also, the, where the nasal spine is right here and kind of this lower part of this nasal aperture, this is something we associate with European populations. It doesn't fit Mitchell Hedge's story. When I look at this, a lot of the features look very feminine up here, but a female with a big jaw 
on the bottom. So um, might not be someone you want to take to dinner or what have you, but yeah, I think it is going to give you a pretty good face. The physical evidence contradicts the idea that the skull must have originated from Central America. According to experts, the skull of doom was modeled on a woman from Europe. Based upon certain ancestry, we all have specific depth of tissue on the face skin, muscle, everything, so from the outside of the face to the bone. And so European face would have a certain depth here, and African face would have another depth. Um, um, Indian or face would have another depth, based here or here or here or here, any of these specific landmarks on the skull. So what I have done is I have cut specifically European markers for this skull based upon the facial features. Markers are glued in place, creating the first hint of what the face will look like. Then, facial muscles are added. This is all based on science. How deep the tissue is at these certain points is all based on science. And then when I put that data on this skull, which is unique, as all our skulls are unique, I get a unique face. Well, I think she's ready. I mean, of course, I could spend more time, but I think that she is ready. And here she is. I'm surprised. This is not the face that I thought she would have. And I feel good that she's not the face that I thought she would have and that I didn't know what she would look like until now because then it makes me... The mystery of the Skull of Doom is slowly being unraveled. The enigmatic features of a young European woman suggest that the Skull of Doom can't have been created by ancient Americans 3,600 years ago. So who did make the Skull of Doom? The investigation into crystal skulls travels to America's capital, Washington, D.C. the Smithsonian. It's where Dr. Jane Walsh, a leading authority on crystal skulls, has spent nearly two decades studying them. In 2007, she carried out extensive analysis of the real skull of doom. And now she comes face to face with its doppelganger. It's beautifully done. This is clearly a very good replica of it. That it exists at all is something she instantly picks up on. Well, by its very existence, it certainly negates many of the claims that um, are made on the Mitchell Hedges website, that you simply could not create a skull like this. Dr. Walsh's analysis of the replica skull of doom has the potential to break the case of the crystal skulls wide open. She knows it was machine cut and polished, unlike the original, which legend says was made by hand. By taking microscopic images of both the replica and the real skull of doom, she'll be able to compare the tool marks left by their carvers. So, I have a list here um, of nine of the molds I took uh, of the Mitchell Hedges skull. So what I'm going to do is try to recreate the molds that I took. Because it's been made by machine, the silicon molds taken from the replica should be much smoother than they would be if they were taken from a handmade crystal skull. 
there it's a very sensitive replicating material that not only picks up the deepest part of the carving it picks up amazing detail particularly in the polish these molds could show if the legendary skull of doom was created by hand here's mitchell hedges too a bit like dna tool marks are invisible to the naked eye but once the samples are magnified 50,000 times, they'll be easy to spot. The two screens on the right have micrographs that were made several years ago of the Mitchell Hedges teeth. And um, this one is one we made yesterday. There are some similarities, but the differences I see also tell me a great deal. But you can see how soft the polish is. Incredibly, the surface of the newly manufactured Chinese replica is much rougher than that of the real Skull of Doom. It's an intriguing discovery that doesn't fit with Maya origins. You can see how much smoother. According to Jane Walsh, it means one thing. There's no doubt, in my mind at least, that it's simply impossible to think that it's a pre-Columbian artifact. It has to have been made using modern machinery and modern polishing techniques. Microsoft or ancient. Its European features cast further doubt on the legitimacy of the claim that it was discovered in Belize by the famous explorer Mitchell Hedges and his daughter Anna. Frederick Mitchell Hedges was a professional adventurer. He would like to have called himself an explorer, except that the only places he explored were already well explored. As far as I know, Mitchell Hedges never picked up a trowel, uh, never mapped a site, never identified an artifact, and certainly didn't have the expertise to do any of those things. Norman Hammond excavated Le Bantoon in the 1970s and thinks it's unlikely that the skull could have been discovered there. When I was excavating at Lubantun in 1970, we were finding a lot of archaeological material. Now, 90% of it was broken pottery and small clay figurines showing the daily life of the ancient Maya. Further evidence that the skull was never at the site. If a crystal skull had turned up at Lubantun or any Maya site, it would have been a shattering find. It could not possibly have been kept quiet. And the fact that in 1927 there was not a peep about it out of anybody suggests that no such discovery took place. At the ruined complex in Belize, investigators have spent years looking for evidence that backs up the Mitchell Hedges story of the skull's discovery. A couple of years ago, when we initiated some excavation at the back here to sort of see if there was something in that area that could remotely uh, relate to the crystal skull, we could not locate any of the niches or passages that she said might have been there. All attempts to discover the hiding place Anna Mitchell Hedges described have failed. But there's a good reason for that. Norman Hammond has researched the history of the excavations at the site and has discovered something Anna Mitchell Hedges forgot to mention. She wasn't actually there. Now, in 1927, we can be even more certain that she wasn't there because there was an official expedition and she does not appear in any of the records. 
Did she hide in a trunk? Where, where was she? Where was she all this time? They were not aware that she was there. After years of claiming to have found the skull in Lubantun herself, there's concrete evidence that Anna Mitchell Hedges made up her story. Well, I love it because I first found it with my father and it's my first little treasure that I found on my own, really. I think Anna Mitchell Hedges started out as a liar and became a fantasist. Uh, I think by the end she actually believed her own story and even if she didn't, she was very good at appearing to believe it. Anna Mitchell Hedges lied about finding the crystal skull in Belize and the investigation needs to look elsewhere to determine its true origin. The investigation into the mysterious Skull of Doom has evidence that proves it wasn't found in Belize. It's a copy of a Sotheby's catalogue which contains a listing for a crystal skull. It's identical to the one Mitchell Hedges claims to have discovered in Central America in the 1920s. It was sold at auction at Sotheby's to Frederick Mitchell Hedges. So he didn't get it at Lubantun, he didn't dig it up. The discovery adds another piece to the puzzle and provides the real reason Mitchell Hedges refused to reveal how he came by the Crystal Skull of Doom in his autobiography. Mitchell Hedges acquired the skull not from the lost Mayan city. No, he bought it. He simply didn't want you to know how he got it because the great adventurer, the great explorer, couldn't just go buy something. No, no, there had to be intrigue and mystery and legend and Mayans and so forth. And people have bought that story. The mysterious legends that surround the Skull of Doom were made up by the Mitchell Hedges family and swallowed by those wanting to believe. As far as I'm concerned, it has nothing to do with Lubantun. It has nothing to do with the ancient Maya. It has nothing to do with the country of Belize, which it certainly was never in unless it's been on a visit in the last few decades. At every turn, the legend of the most famous crystal skull of them all has been dissected. Claims of the paranormal, tested and rejected. Evidence of their origin, analyzed and disproved. Few artifacts have so many claims with so little justification for them. Starting with the claim that it came from Lubantun, we know that it did not. We know the claim that it was found under incredible circumstances, not true. That it could not have been made by human hands, so to speak, not true. It's carved the way you would carve a crystal skull today. That it has special properties. This is all just new age nonsense that you can get from any book on, you know, the idiot's guide to crystal thinking or something. Uh, no, it has no special properties, whatever. The discovery sheds light on the story of all crystal skulls. They're not the mysterious magical objects of an ancient civilization. So what are they? 
the whole crystal skull business is, as far as I'm concerned, a Victorian one. But I don't think it's a fraud in the sense that I think those who made the skulls were not making them as fake pre-Columbian artifacts. There was, after all, no tradition of crystal skull work for them to fake. These are genuine crystal skulls, but they're genuine 19th century crystal skulls. The crystal skulls are modern creations. They're beautiful and compelling objects, masterpieces of the jewel maker's art. We may never discover who made them, or indeed where, but what is certain is that they have no special powers, except for their ability to captivate us. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories. Do you want to know what it is? This drug was infected with the AIDS virus. Sent parents a letter warning them to make sure their children are vaccinated. Immunization for all children admits the group takes money from the vaccine industry. To have radio frequency identification chips placed inside their hands. Yeah.